Before we get started, a couple quick definitions. If I say a denomination is evangelical, that means that they believe in a necessary born-again experience, believe the Bible has no errors, and are opposed to abortion and gay marriage. A theologically liberal denomination doesn't require a born-again experience or Bible inerrancy, and either allows abortion and gay marriage or has a sizable percentage of the membership who are in favor. We'll start with Reformed and Presbyterian denominations. They are five-point Calvinist, meaning Christ died only for the elect, and that the elect will belief because of God's sovereignty. Two sacraments, infant baptism, most commonly by sprinkling, and Christ is viewed as spiritually present in the elements of the Lord's Supper. The teaching office is that of teaching elder or pastor. The Presbyterian Church in America is evangelical. Presbyterian polity, which means that the congregations are governed internally by elders, and church leaders form presbyteries over groups of churches. No ordained women adheres to the Westminster Confession. The Reformed Church in America has moderate and liberal congregations. It ordains women since 1979, still Presbyterian polity. Gay ordination is now happening not by denomination-wide approval, but because the church doesn't have policy absolutely prohibiting it. Some churches teach a born-again experience. The Presbyterian Church USA is the most theologically liberal of the Reformed denominations we've mentioned. There is still a moderate wing, but it's a smaller percentage than in the RCA. Gay clergy officially allowed since 2013 and gay marriage since 2014. Most churches don't teach a born-again experience. Here is the communion of Reformed evangelical churches. They allow member churches to pick from a list of confessions to adhere to, including Congregational and Reformed Baptist ones. Also, churches may practice paedo-communion, giving the Lord's Supper to young children, mostly frowned on by Reformed folks. They also are rejected as truly Reformed by a bunch of Reformed folks due to something much too complex to explain now called Federal Vision, but you can all sort that out in the comments. Let's look at a couple Anglican denominations. There's broader range for views on communion, spiritual presence and corporeal presence may be affirmed, infants may be baptized, and baptism is generally by pouring or immersion. Beyond those two main sacraments, another five may be viewed as sacraments too, confirmation, ordination, holy matrimony, reconciliation, and unction. There are priests and bishops above them, which must be ordained in succession from the apostles. Sacraments bring saving grace, and a one-time salvation experience is generally not taught. The vast majority in America are part of the Episcopal Church. Women are ordained and gay marriage is accepted. The more theologically conservative Anglican body is the Anglican Church in North America. No gay marriage here and only some dioceses ordain women. Let's look at some Methodist and Wesleyan Holiness churches. In this tradition, women have been ministers for 200 years. Salvation theology is Arminian, meaning those who teach a born-again experience of salvation believe that salvation can be lost. They also teach entire sanctification, a sanctification experience that makes one perfect in love in this life, which is more emphasized in the theologically conservative congregations. Most practice infant baptism. The United Methodist Church is still here in one piece as of early 2021, but that's going to change soon. In America, the majority are in favor of allowing same-sex marriage and gay ordination. Overseas, the majority oppose. There are evangelical and progressive theologically liberal churches. The UMC is not just an association of congregations, it owns the church property, and it has a modified Episcopal polity. The evangelical Methodist Church is theologically conservative, teaching inerrancy. It has premillennial eschatology. The denomination is also not simply an association, but it allows churches to leave with their property easier than the UMC has. It has connectional polity. The Bible Methodist Connection of Churches believes in inerrancy, allows varying eschatology, is a connection of independent congregations, practices only believers' baptism, not for infants, and has more strict standards, such as prohibitions on women cutting their hair and wearing jewelry. The African Methodist Episcopal Church is a majority black denomination. Theology varies here, like within the United Methodist Church, with some more liberal and others more conservative. Worship style is similar to what you'll see in other African American majority churches, generally more active and participatory. Churches normally have a strong sense of community. The Salvation Army is in many ways similar to Methodism, which its founder, William Booth, was a part of. Entire sanctification is taught. It is a denomination today, but that wasn't the original intention, so it has some quirks. No practice of baptism or communion. Members are called soldiers and sometimes wear a uniform. Clergy are officers and wear uniforms and gain ranks. They are very focused on social programs and helping the disadvantaged. The Christian and Missionary Alliance is a denomination that follows the Kezekian Higher Life Theology, a strong emphasis on holiness and sanctification, but not accepting the Wesleyan entire sanctification or the Pentecostal spirit baptism with necessary tongue speaking. It is evangelical and very missions focused and espouses a fourfold gospel. Baptism is only for believers and by immersion only. 
Lutherans, in general, have rejected the one-time view of salvation and teach that the sacraments do bring saving grace. There are only two or three sacraments, baptism, normally by sprinkling, and communion, in which Christ is viewed as present in and around the elements, a view called sacramental union. The third, not always practiced, is confession. The Book of Concord contains the Lutheran confessional theology. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is the largest conservative Lutheran body in the U.S. and enforces adherence to the confessions. Women may not be pastors, and homosexuality is viewed as sinful. Church polity is congregational. Communion is closed. Only other LCMS members or those in altar fellowship may participate. The Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod is in many ways similar to the LCMS. Here, women aren't allowed to vote in church-wide votes, and they teach a doctrine of prayer fellowship that members shouldn't pray with people who aren't of like faith and practice, such as those the church isn't in fellowship with. Lutheran Congregations in Mission for Christ is a moderate denomination. There are some charismatic Lutheran churches here. There are many who do believe in a one-time born-again experience and look more evangelical. Women can be pastors, but no gay marriage. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America is the largest U.S. Lutheran denomination. The word evangelical in their name does not mean evangelical in the sense Americans take it to mean. The denomination is theologically liberal, with the LGBT movement accepted and ordained gay, lesbian, and transgender ministers. The church polity is Episcopal. Baptists believe in a symbolic view of the elements of communion. Christ is not literally present. Baptism is for believers only and only by immersion. Church polity is congregational, and the denominations are normally very loose, more like associations that don't have control over the churches. The Southern Baptist Convention is the largest Protestant denomination in the U.S. They are theologically conservative, affirming inerrancy. Women may not be pastors. The Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, split from the SBC, doesn't have a position on the inerrancy of Scripture, and allows women as pastors. Though the denomination itself doesn't condone homosexuality, its status as more more of an association and position on not expelling churches means that there is a sizable minority of LGBT affirming churches, and several churches have ordained gay and lesbian clergy. American Baptist Churches USA is a mainline Baptist denomination, probably the most progressive large Baptist denomination in the USA. There is a sizable portion of majority black churches in the ABC USA. Like the CBF, the denomination is mostly hands-off with the congregationally governed churches, so some perform gay marriages and others do not. The National Baptist Convention USA has a large majority black denomination. Some churches ordain women, others don't. Some perform gay marriage, others don't. In contrast, the National Baptist Convention of America, also a majority black denomination, is evangelical, opposes women's ordination, and opposes homosexuality. The Progressive National Baptist Convention is, as named, the most progressive majority black Baptist denomination in the U.S. with a focus on political involvement. Ordination of women is accepted and churches may perform gay marriages if they choose. Mennonites are peace churches that oppose war and promote nonviolence. They practice baptism of believers only and not infants. Pouring is often the mode, though immersion is sometimes used. The Lord's Supper is viewed as symbolic. Mennonites don't believe in swearing oaths, congregational polity is the norm. Often there are more ordinances than just two. Anointing, holy kiss, foot washing, ordination, marriage, and others may be considered ordinances. The most progressive Mennonite U.S. denomination is the Mennonite Church USA. Unlike the conservative Mennonites many may be familiar with, members of this denomination don't have any special clothing or many restrictions. The church is opposed to abortion and the death penalty. Some districts allow same-sex marriage and ordained LGBT clergy. Many, but not all, congregations practice a third ordinance of foot washing. The denomination is focused on social justice issues, such as dismantling patriarchy. The conservative Mennonite conference is, unsurprisingly, more conservative. Women may not be pastors, and homosexuality is taught as sinful. In the biblical Mennonite alliance, women do not cut their hair, women wear head coverings, and there's no jewelry, including no wedding rings. Men are not to wear ties. The Amish, as followers too of Menno Simons, also believe in nonviolence and other Anabaptist or Mennonite distinctives. Most don't vote or get politically involved. They abstain from participating in secular careers, rather they work in their own community often in agriculture. They are known for not using vehicles, rather most use horse-drawn buggies. Most have no electric utilities, and varying communities put other restrictions on membership, such as precise rules on clothing, use of farm equipment, and so on. Hutterites also hold to Anabaptist distinctives in teaching, are not as strict as the Amish, so they have vehicles and electricity, but live in communal colonies. There is very little personal property. The colony owns together the housing, provides the meals, and operates not unlike a corporation. Though most do ban 
ban televisions and some prohibit the internet, the colonies often are advanced manufacturing hubs or have cutting-edge agricultural operations. Schwarzenau Brethren groups are Anabaptists from Germany. The historic practice includes believer's baptism with three separate forward immersions, communion with a love feast, feet washing, the holy kiss, anointing with oil, non-resistance, and no swearing of oaths. One of the more conservative groups today is the Old German Baptist Brethren. They have plain dress, a cappella singing and worship, restrict use of radios and televisions, and are divided over the use of the internet. The mainline denomination in this tradition is the Church of the Brethren. It's the largest and most theologically diverse of the Schwarzenau Brethren groups. Many churches no longer practice the mentioned distinctives like the Holy Kiss and would accept a person joining the church baptized without trine immersion. Some churches perform same-sex marriages, but most are opposed. Many do not affirm biblical inerrancy. The Brethren Church is conservative and evangelical, affirming biblical inerrancy. Some churches ordain women, non-trine immersion is acceptable for transfers, no gay marriage is allowed here, and there's varying views on end times. Karis Fellowship is a split from the Brethren Church. Women are not ordained. They are premillennial and pre-tribulational in their eschatology, and they teach eternal security. Leaving the Schwarzenau Brethren, Plymouth Brethren are a separate, unrelated Brethren group from those just mentioned. They have conservative theology and two sides, open and exclusive brethren, and are congregational. They practice believer's baptism by immersion. Exclusive brethren don't have ordination, but instead those within the membership run the church services. Many open brethren have a plurality of elders. Communion is central and practiced weekly. Many congregations require head coverings on women. Most are dispensational, pre-tribulational, pre-millennial in their eschatology. Another singular denomination is the Moravian Church, which has bishops and claims apostolic succession, has two sacraments of baptism and communion. Infants are baptized and communion is open. Churches often practice the love feast. They teach that the Bible doesn't contain a doctrine system and are very open to diversity on things considered non-essentials. Women are ordained and some provinces allow ordination of LGBT clergy and gay marriage. Churches of Christ are entirely independent congregations with no formal connections to each other. Most are very conservative. They believe baptism is necessary for salvation and teach a born-again experience and practice Christian standards like teaching on acceptable standards of music and clothing. They reject eternal security, are amillennial, and reject ecumenical connection to other Christian groups. The main division between two large groups of churches of Christ can be seen in that one side uses instruments in worship and the other side does not. The theologically liberal denomination from the same origin as the Churches of Christ is the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Today, these churches look polar opposite to the Churches of Christ as they are one of the most progressive denominations in the United States. The only required beliefs today in most Disciples of Christ churches are accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and obedience through baptism. Weekly communion is common and most churches practice believers' baptism by immersion, though this is not the case in every Disciples of Christ church. They are very ecumenical, having full communion agreements with many other denominations. Nations. Congregationalism is a reformed tradition that emphasized congregational over Presbyterian polity. In the USA, congregationalism originated from Puritans starting independent congregations. The vast majority of churches in this tradition merged with a Presbyterian denomination to form the United Church of Christ. Today, this denomination is one of the most progressive in the United States. LGBT clergy are accepted, and there is very little in the way of required theology, including most churches no longer teaching distinctives of reformed theology. A more conservative denomination in the tradition, with churches coming from the same congregational denomination that merged into the United Church of Christ, is the Conservative Congregational Christian Conference. Churches in the conference are independent. Some ordain women and others do not. They are evangelical and oppose gay marriage. The conference doesn't require specific positions on many issues, and although they recognize their Reformed heritage, not all churches are Reformed. Pentecostal denominations affirm the necessity of a born-again experience, but also following at some point that people people should seek another experience, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They also believe that the spiritual gifts mentioned in the New Testament are all available and practiced today, including speaking in tongues. Salvation theology is Arminian in that a person may be saved and then apostatize and be lost again. Baptism is for believers and by immersion. There is a memorial view of communion. Assemblies of God affirm that baptism in the Holy Spirit is always accompanied with speaking in tongues. They are evangelical, and most churches are congregational in polity. There are no bishops. 
They do not teach a crisis entire sanctification event following salvation. Baptism and communion are the two ordinances. Women may be ordained. The Foursquare Church also has only two ordinances and does not teach a sanctification experience. There is a modified Episcopal polity, though there is no office of bishop. Churches have a pastor and a church council and are under the authority of their district and its supervisor. Foursquare is not quite as hardline on requiring ministers to preach that speaking in tongues is always the initial evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The Church of God Cleveland, Tennessee also has an ordinance of feet washing. There are three ministerial ranks, exhorter, ordained minister, and bishop. Women may hold any office except for bishop. There is a hierarchical church polity. Individual congregations do not have the right to withdraw. Most teach a sanctification experience. Although most churches in the U.S. are majority white, there is also a large contingent of Hispanic and African majority churches. They teach the initial evidence doctrine of speaking in tongues. The Church of God in Christ is a majority black denomination with baptism, the Lord's Supper, and feet washing as ordinances. They teach speaking in tongues as the initial evidence of spirit baptism. There is a sanctification experience after salvation. There is Episcopal polity with bishops above pastors and elders. Unlike most Pentecostal denominations, women are not ordained as elders, pastors, or bishops. All Pentecostals are charismatic, but not all charismatics are Pentecostal. Non-Pentecostal charismatic denominations affirm the continuation of spirit gifts, including the practice of speaking in tongues to the present, but differ from Pentecostalism on Holy Spirit baptism. Calvary Chapel teaches that Holy Spirit baptism, though a separate event from salvation, can take place at the same time. Speaking in tongues is not the initial evidence of Holy Spirit baptism, though it could be present. Calvary chapels are generally more restrictive on the use of spiritual gifts than Pentecostal churches. Churches are independent and only loosely joined by an association. Church government is with a senior pastor holding final authority, but a board beneath and possibly other pastors. There's a strong emphasis on teaching through the Bible and not just topically. They require a pre-tribulation rapture and pre-millennial stance. They don't teach an entire sanctification experience. They are skeptical of church growth techniques. Calvary chapels don't teach alcohol is absolutely prohibited by scripture, but most teach that abstinence is the best position. Vineyard churches are much freer with the expression of spiritual gifts as they too believe the ongoing practice of all the gifts to the present, including tongues. However, they don't teach Holy Spirit baptism is separate from salvation. It occurs at the same time, and tongues may not be manifested at that time. Churches are run by the senior pastor. Women may be pastors. There is no required eschatology position, though dispensationalism is frowned upon. Alcohol is not prohibited. The United Pentecostal Church International is a Pentecostal denomination that rejects the Trinitarian view of God in three persons. They affirm that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, but they believe that there is only one person. God's name is Jesus, so baptism is in the name of Jesus and necessary as part of the plan of salvation. Holy Spirit baptism with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues is also necessary for being born again. There are many standards in most churches, such as women not cutting their hair or wearing jewelry. Due to their beliefs on God, most Pentecostal denominations refuse to consider them as Christian or to fellowship with them. Another church that is controversial in its acceptance by other denominations is Seventh-day Adventism. Some Christians reject it as being a legitimate Christian denomination. In addition to worshiping on Saturday, they also teach that God inspired Ellen G. White, who was a prophetess. They teach that Jesus ministered in the heavenly sanctuary until 1844. They teach a unique doctrine of an investigative judgment, annihilationism, that the dead are unconscious, keeping food laws of the Old Testament and that Christ is also Michael the Archangel. Several denominations are in the movement of the Church of God's Seventh Day, which is a movement of Sabbath-keeping churches that don't accept the prophecies of Ellen White. These may vary a bit, but are generally opposed to war, also teach that the dead are unconscious and the eventual annihilation of the wicked, and practice the food laws of the Old Testament. Many also reject celebrating holidays. Some Church of God's Seventh Day groups reject the Trinity. Seventh-day Baptists predate the Seventh-day Adventists and Church of God Seventh-day. Other than believing in worship on Saturday, they look similar to other Baptists. They don't observe food laws nor teach annihilationism or soul sleep. The Evangelical Free Church of America is a denomination formed from Lutheran pietism that is no longer Lutheran. Churches are evangelical, affirming inerrancy and a necessary born-again experience. Women are not ordained, but on many issues, churches are free to hold differing beliefs, such as on baptism, eternal security, and eschatology. Church polity is congregational. 
The Church of God, Anderson, Indiana, is within the Church of God movement, which is unrelated to the other Church of God denominations mentioned so far. Individual congregations are independent. There's congregational polity. Women may be ordained. Salvation theology is Arminian in that people may apostatize and be lost. Baptism is by immersion for believers. The Lord's Supper is symbolic, and a third ordinance of feet washing is also practiced. Entire sanctification is taught, and eschatology is mostly amillennial. Then there's the Quakers, or Religious Society of Friends. Quakers are very tolerant of dissent, meaning there can be a wide variety of beliefs. There are evangelicals, holiness, liberal, and conservatives. Most affirm ongoing revelation. Nonviolence is encouraged. Some congregations have unprogrammed worship, where the service doesn't have a preset plan and those in attendance can stand and speak if they feel led to do so. Some do not celebrate traditional holidays. Many do not practice baptism or communion. Women participate in all aspects of ministry. So you probably noticed that I spoke mostly about American denominations and Protestants. I didn't mention Catholics or the Orthodox. I didn't talk about other groups like Jehovah's Witnesses or LDS. Here's the deal. In this video, I've had to leave out a lot. In fact, if you just look at the comments on this video, I'm sure you'll see people pointing out things I left out. Since this video was meant to be a quick overview, I knew that sticking with Protestants at least would allow me a base level of similarity to make these quick comparisons. And there's a bunch of Protestants I didn't mention too. But you're in luck because this whole channel is about to denomination differences, and we talk about Catholics, Orthodox, and everyone else. So subscribe and look around at the videos, and I'm sure you'll find the answers you're looking for. If you don't, there's a video where you can request a new denomination or topic for me to cover and vote on other people's suggestions.